global politics has flipped on its head, it seems. The European Union has seen a right-wing takeover in Parliament, leading to the dissolution of the French government. France's Emmanuel Macron announced Sunday that he was dissolving the National Assembly and calling a snap legislative election. This as his party suffered a big defeat in elections for the European Parliament. The French president said yesterday he would not resign regardless of the results of the upcoming parliamentary elections. Germany's extreme right party surged too, catapulting to second place ahead of the socialist party there. Many of the far-right candidates share President Trump's populist vision and are hostile to immigrants, angry about economics, and share disdain for governing elites and global institutions. Reactions have been swift. Here's one ex-user. The enormity of the gamble Emmanuel Macron has taken is not lost on the most senior EU officials. Many are furious. It risks not only the stability of France and the EU, but also the bloc's ambitions on security and defense in the long term. Uh, Breitbart took no time to gloat. Breitbart has a headline reading, Panic in Paris as Macron's suicidal snap election paves way for populist right to take power. The move also has tongues wagging on this side of the Atlantic. What does this portend for Europe and U.S. elections? Um, so this is a long time coming. Um, the right is rising in Europe as a reaction to a lot of dissatisfaction with the European Union, with uh, European and glo you know, world government type arrangements that many of the people in Europe think have been um, too accommodating to uh, immigrants and uh, refugees um, from the Middle East. Uh, there is that, you know, you, you can disagree with that. You, say, you should say people shouldn't feel that way, but they clearly do, um, just as so many people in the U.S. are suspicious of increased um, immigration, um, you know, for slightly different reasons. It's not like a, like a terrorism fear necessarily. In Europe, it is a, it's a terrorism fear. It's a cultural mismatch, you know, a fear that people in France and Germany and other places have that bringing in an influx of too many of these people um, is going to change the, you know, secular, post-enlightenment, Western European kind of norms and traditions. And uh, it's, it's absolutely becoming um, something that the right and the far right parties have seized the momentum on and are, and are going to ride that to greater and greater political success. Right. We are seeing the concerning growth of the far right across Europe, um, not just in France, but in other countries as well. In Germany, we've, we've seen it in Italy, and it's, it's concerning. It's bad. And someone like Macron deciding to call snap legislative elections, of course, they have elections much sooner than we do. They'll be more towards the end of the month. You know, we imagine, oh, an election's happening. It must be years from now. But that's not mm -hmm. how things work in many countries uh, across the world, including France. And so for him to see the results of this election for the European Parliament and say, well, a lot of people are going for the kind of Marine Le Pen party. They're going for the more anti-immigrant farther right. I'm going to call elections because people are moving towards the right is not the right analysis, I would say. I think uh, to assume that those will be his party's votes to gain is wrong. There's a big difference between the further right groups, even in the United States, and the more centrist groups. The Republican Party saw a, a resurgence in support because of Donald Trump being to the right of the Republican Party. And then we saw subsequently the fracturing within the Republican Party of you know what Trump likes to call the rhinos, the RNC, the hardliner, more centrist conservative Republicans versus you know the further right, more anti-immigrant Republicans, which is his party. And so I think what we're seeing in Europe is a trend that you know we see across the world mm -hmm. where when you have long-term colonial and imperial capitalism, it's inevitable that there's a growth of the right after so many years. We've seen this in so many different countries. There's a tendency towards fascism as corporations gain more power and work more closely with the government. Uh, it's been studied throughout history, and so I think what we're seeing in Europe is something that's very predictable but very sad. And there's important exceptions. Countries like Ireland that are, are very likely to hire uh, a pro-labor government 
which is a big resistance to a lot of the austerity politics we saw in previous years. They watched austerity politics fail, the movement to the right when it comes to economics fail, and they're ready for something else. And so I hope that's what's next for Europe and that this isn't sticky as a trend. A couple things. I don't know that I agree that Trump was actually to the right of the Republican Party. Um, mm. He certainly was on immigration. Um, you know, and then it starts to break down, well, what is what does conservative or what does right even mean? Mm. Frankly, now we define the most conservative, if we're just talking about in the American Republican Party political context, the most conservative person is the most Trump person. Like that is how it is defined. If you're remotely critical of Trump, you're a moderate Republican. If you're anti-Trump, you're considered a liberal Republican. Even if all of your other policies are totally in line with, with what you know Mitt Romney or John McCain thought. And those two people both got uh, accused for being, uh, John McCain certainly was accused of being uh, and not a, a conservative Republican, but a moderate or even liberal Republican. But then on foreign policy, he was you know, totally in line with the Republican Party at the time. He was very interventionist. Um, Don, so Donald Trump, I agree, was to the right of the Republican Party on immigration, or to the right of elected Republicans. He was speaking to what the base actually wanted. I mean, on entitlements, he was certainly more moderate than Mitt Romney was. He, he was not, he promised not to do anything to tweak Social Security or Medicare, whereas um, you know Paul Ryan, the kind of intellectual leader of the Republican Party previously, had a had a plan had a plan I liked. I you know I'm out of step with Trump on this. I actually think we should do something to reform entitlements, but it's not a popular opinion. Um, it's a conservative opinion, and it's one Trump didn't share. And then on foreign policy, you know Trump was. Certainly, he did not always govern this way, but he was more vocally committed to anti-interventionism than um, than a lot of other people in the party. Does that make him more right or less right? It's you know, it's that's that's the horseshoe where the most right and the most left people. I mean, as evidence is how our how our show works. That's probably an area where you and I and me and the other hosts who've been in the left chair have had the most agreement is on foreign policy, even though you know we're out of step with the moderate middle, but are they really the middle? I, it, you know, it starts to break down. But it's clear that the same frustrations that animated um, Trump's rise here are prevalent in Europe. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call them fascist. I wouldn't, I mean, certain, some of them I'm sure are, are, uh, are, are xenophobic. I'm not uh, against immigration, but you know, if, I had a, if I was part of a country that was being massively overrun by, um, by uh, people fleeing, Political persecution and ho some horrible situations, absolutely, and and the overwhelming majority of them going to integrate and uh, and and make our society better. That's great, but there would there are concerns that these people are having about um, crime and terror and violence, and and you can't just pretend they're not real because you're never going to win in politics if you just say sorry, you have to deal with it. We're just letting everybody in. That's it's not a winning argument. Yeah, and people in France are very economically, you know, to the left. They're very critical of any jeopardization of their entitlements, of their retirement, of their working week, the retirement age sparked protests across the country. And so I think that's a good thing about France. But seeing the trend in media and among the political class in Europe, not among everyday people, and I think it's a fair point to say a lot of Trump supporters and the base was not further right than a lot of Republicans. They were isolationists, they want to keep social security, they want a good life for working people, and they're at odds with a lot of, you know, what the Republicans and more establishment uh, folks think. But it, it, in Europe, I'm seeing a similar division among regular everyday people and the political class, because on, on BBC, there was this, you know, guest, I didn't even catch who it was, talking about Green New Deal policies and how we need some stimulus in our economy. There needs to be public spending in order to transition to renewable energy because the incentives economically are not really there for corporations to take the jump and, and have the initial capital investment. You need some public dollars going into it. The money needs to come from somewhere. And the host just kind of dismissed the categorization that the Inflation Reduction Act is a Green New Deal type policy, but it's a popular one because it's not Green New Deal by name and that in fact, these policies are popular. It's just they've gotten a bad rep, bad branding in public. Mm -hmm. And the host kind of laughed her off. And that formerly used to be a very center take in Europe. And so I do think we've seen a shifting among the political class to the right. Mm. We'll continue to monitor that. More rising right after this.